Welcome to the Pico Tracker version 2 build guide. Step 1. We first need to insert each switch into its into its matching uh, spot on the key PCB. Please note that whether you use the Cherry compatible switches as shown here or the Kayla Chock switches which are also um, compatible with this keypad PCB you need to make sure that the orientation is correct and matches the holes and guides on the PCB. Also, when you're inserting the switches into the PCB, make sure that you carefully insert them so as the small metal feet clear and go through the respective holes for them. Check on the back of the PCB as you insert each key switch. We'll now go through and show inserting each key switch into the keypad PCB one at a time. We'll speed this section up so it doesn't take too long. Note as I'm inserting each key switch I'm checking to make sure that the orientation is correct and that the metal legs on the switch go through the PCB holes correctly. If you make a mistake, such as I did, and accidentally bend the legs as you insert them, just pop out the switch, place, place it on the table or bench and straighten out the legs. And then you can just simply put it again carefully into the PCB, making sure that the legs go through correctly this time. The next step is to turn the PCB over and solder down each key switch. As I mentioned previously, each key switch has two small metal legs. You need to basically solder each one of these to the PCB. Take your time here and solder them carefully, making sure that a good contact is formed. Every second switch's leg is connected to ground, so you can always use a multimeter to check the connectivity of all these legs together. Also have a good look, like under a strong light, to make sure that you don't have any cold solder joints and that all the solder joints have been made correctly. The next step is to do a trial fitting of the main PCB into the case. This is to make sure that there are no issues with the case and that the case is printed correctly and the PCB can fit snugly but without requiring too much force to insert into the case. Once you've checked that the TRS and USB ports and SD card slots have all lined up correctly, pop the PCB back out ready for the following parts of the assembly procedure. The next step is to mount the LCD onto the main PCB. You'll note that there's a connector for the LCD's flex cable next to a hole to allow the flex cable to come through from the other side of the PCB. Note there's two small little uh, plastic parts on each side of the connector which you need to carefully pull out to allow the PCB cable to be inserted into the connector. Do this very carefully as those plastic parts are quite delicate. Once you've done that turn over the PCB note the direction that you want to insert the flex cable through the hole is such that the gold contacts on the flex cable are facing up when it comes through to the connector side of the PCB. As you can see here, I've inserted them inserted incorrectly. So the back of the flex cable is actually coming through, not the front gold side. So make sure 
you put the flex cable through the hole in the right direction so that when it comes out onto the connector side, the gold contacts on the flex cable are facing upwards and it's that direction that you need to insert into the connector. This can be a little bit of a fiddly job, so you might want to just pop it down on a mat or table and gently insert it so that the contacts, contacts come in properly into the connector. You might need to just pop open the um, black plastic pins on the connector to give it the space it needs to be inserted like you see here and then you push the black pins back into the connector to secure the flex cable inside the connector. Make sure they're secure. And then you should be able to turn it over and you can see it's correctly inserted through the hole. Note that there are lines on the back of the PCB to show you where the LCD needs to mount. If you've got an LCD module such as the one I have here, which does not ha already have double-sided mounting tape applied to it, you can just use some double-sided tape yourself to stick down the LCD module onto the PCB. Here you can see I just quickly roughly measure the amount required and stick down the double-sided tape onto the LCD both on the bottom and top sides to secure, to secure it onto the PCB. Once you've got the double side tape on the LCD, just flip it over and into the little holes that should match the little nodules that are on each corner of the LCD. You'll see that there's little matching holes in each corner of the PCB. Align those little plastic nodules to the holes to secure the PCB to the LCD. Again, take your time. This can be a little bit fiddly. Just make sure you align it all correctly. Then gently press down to secure the double side tape. The next step is to insert the battery into the back of the PCB. This is a fairly simple process but it can be again a little bit fiddly because it's a small connector so you might just want to put it down on a table as you do it. The next step is to secure the PCB to the key PCB I should say to the case. There are three screws that are required. One goes into the center of the keypad PCB and two more into the top left and top right corners of the key PCB to secure it to your case. The, the final step in the process is to insert the PCB, the main PCB with the battery connected into the case. Place the battery first into the case, then carefully insert the main PCB, making sure it goes into the cutouts for the sockets. It lines up with the small hole that's cut out of the power switch, and it also lines, its connector also lines up with the connector on the keypad. Once that's done, you can then add 
the four screws into each corner of the main PCB to secure it to the case. At this point, you can now lift up the small little tab to move it out the way so that you can insert and put in the final screw. And now with that done, you can peel off the protective uh, plastic off the LCD. The next step is to attach the PCB bezel onto the case. Again, there are four screws, one in each corner. Just take your time and screw each one in to the respective hole, making sure you don't over tighten the screws. They should be tightened firmly and securely, but not over tightened. With that done, you can now go ahead and put on the keycaps get get it keeping them carefully on each on each switch just press down firmly and they should attach nicely to each of the switches here i've chosen to use two different colors of keycaps but of course you can choose whichever combination of colors you prefer Finally, you can now take the SD card, turn it upside down so that the gold contacts are facing up towards you and insert it into the SD card slot on the right hand side of the Pico Tracker. And you're ready to attach USB cable to power up the Pico Tracker in case the battery is not fully charged and then just switch it on by pushing, uh, the, by sliding the switch in an upwards direction. The Pico Tracker should turn on and be ready to use. You're now ready to use your Pico Tracker. If you'd like further information, please see the links below in the description of this video for the user manual and other information. Thanks for watching and enjoy your Pico Tracker.